This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to the Unstoppable Indians. Every week we take a journey into the life of an outstanding Indian, a person whose talent, acumen or moral example is transforming India. The best, the finest from every field join me, Mandi Dhillon, on this show to share their life story, their journey to success, some of the knocks along the way, what made them get up and keep going, what makes them an unstoppable Indian. My guest today is described as a technology czar. She is Chief Technology Officer at Cisco Systems. Before this, she was CTO at Motorola. She was also widely believed to be a leading candidate for the job of Federal Chief Technology Officer, a newly created post by the Obama administration. Yes, my guest today is Padmashri Warrior, as I mentioned, CTO at Cisco Systems. Padmashri Warrior's interest in science began at an early age, as a young girl growing up in Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. She pursued her interest, earning a bachelor's degree at IIT Delhi and a master's degree at Cornell University. Her first job was at Motorola. She spent the next 23 years at the company, working her way to Chief Technology Officer at Motorola. At the time, Padmashri led a team of 26,000 engineers and directed Motorola Labs, which had an annual budget of $3.7 billion. In 2007, Padmashri moved to Cisco as Chief Technology Officer. Her mandate today is to drive technological innovation and strategy at this IT bellwether. Padmashri, thank you very much uh, for joining me on the show from your office in San Jose. My pleasure, Manvi. As you know, we are actually connecting with each other through Cisco's telepresence, and I hope you're enjoying this experience. It's wonderful, and I, I have to say it's marvelous quality. So, yes, you've got a strong uh, vote uh, from my side, but, uh, you know, you're a person who has your finger on the pulse of the world of technology. It's simple. What's got you most excited right now? What's the big idea out there in the world of technology? You know, it's interesting. Um, technology is really um, something that drives how we work, how we live, and uh, the infrastructure underneath is basically the architectures for computing. So if you think about how work is changing, how our connected life is changing, how we're able to talk to each other, um, using technology across thousands of miles in very different uh, locations. Unfortunately, it's a different time zone for you, so I apologize for that. Um, but basically, technology you know, brings us together as individuals, and that's the part that excites me more. It's not so much the abstract, abstract concepts of technology, but really the impact it has on work, life, and uh, the associated uh, fields. Uh, in our lifestyle, the thing that I find most exciting about technology right now is actually the use of video. How video is going to transform how we work, how we connect with each other, not just how we communicate, but actually um, how we conduct business, how we transact across different companies, across different countries and governments. That's the part that I find most exciting right now. So does that mean that the structure of the IT business is changing as well? you know, what businesses, companies are doing right now, new business lines, and how does all of that um, affect the structure of the industry as a whole? You know, I'm not sure it's so much a structural shift. I think what I see happening is really a uh, convergence of what we used to think of as separate industries. We used to think of communications industry being very different from computing industry, um, being very different from content, and those three industries are sort of uh, coming together. And the other thing we are seeing is a blurring of uh, boundaries between what we thought of work and what we thought of life. You know, these days, um, those boundaries are pretty much gone. You know, we work wherever we are. So I think driven by those things, we will see a shift in um, companies that can bring value into the industry will be those companies that can deliver not just computing infrastructure or communications infrastructure or content infrastructure, but really companies that can um, span all the way from applications to the infrastructure for all of these three industries, which were separate before. So that's going to change the landscape of who competes with who. Uh, there'll probably be some consolidation. There'll be shift, as you put it, in the in the structure of the businesses with respect to where where profits, where the profit pools are going to be in the future. So I could extrapolate 
from what you've just said and get a sense of you know, what Cisco is thinking. But I'll ask it from you straight. What's the future for Cisco? Sure. I know Cisco's uh, vision is essentially to catch the market transitions, as we call them, and lead the industry as a uh, market's transition. And so right now, we believe there are uh, three fundamental areas that we are very focused on that are going to drive the market transitions. Uh, one is in the area of video, as I talked about. We believe video is actually going to shift the fundamentals in uh, the future of work, how work gets done in the future the future of connected life and actually how the next internet gets built. So video is a huge priority for us. Uh, we are seeing you know, the, the fruits of some of the technology innovations that we are bringing into marketplace. Telepresence, by the way, is not just a way that we communicate. We're extending this particular technology into things like healthcare, uh, providing remote health applications using this type of a technology where a doctor can interact with a patient. You know, If you're my doctor and I'm in a remote area, I could go to a um, unit like this and communicate with you, for example. Um, so, you know, we're also taking telepresence into sports and entertainment and connecting large stadiums. Um, so really, video is a huge area of focus for us. The second area is uh, collaboration, how people and companies can collaborate on a platform and exchange information, start working on things. You know, remember a few years ago, many companies were talking about cross-functional teams within a company. It's now actually intercompany collaboration. Um, so that's a second area of focus for us. So video is the first one, collaboration is the second one. Third area we're very excited about is virtualization. So virtualization is essentially um, in a techie language, separating out the applications and services from the underlying infrastructure. So basically, it gives users and uh, CIOs a lot of flexibility with respect to how infrastructure gets used. Uh, so we see that as a third area, which eventually leads to cloud computing, which many people you know, talk about these days. What's interesting is that I, as a consumer, feel Cisco's presence much more in my life. So I think what I'm trying to say is that I see Cisco expanding its consumer interface and hence its consumer products. Um, would that be a fair statement to make? Absolutely. I think, you know, um, as we see the lines blurring between work and life, some of the solutions we develop are going to be applicable in many of the segments, you know, enterprise segment, which has uh, been Cisco's strength always, and service providers, enabling service providers uh, to deliver a lot of these applications as services and consumers. You know, we've uh, recently announced uh, the intent to acquire a company called Pure Digital, which makes the flip uh, video record, high density video camera. I don't know if you've seen that product. It's a great product. You know, next time we go to do interviews like this, you can actually carry this with you and, and do on the spot interviews. It's very high density. And people sometimes get confused on why we're making that acquisition. The intent is not simply to deliver the device to the consumer, but actually to create an architecture for video where user generated content, not professionally created content, but you know, if I'm walking around, I see something, I want to record it, I can instantly share that. Um, so th this is definitely an area of focus for us also. So consumer, service provider, enterprise, and commercial, as we call it, are the segments that we are focused on. So what about smartphones? You know, it's, uh, um, smartphones is an interesting area. I think what I believe is actually in the future, internet mobility will be very pervasive. You know, just like we don't say mobile email anymore, we just uh, you know assume we get email, whether it's on a mobile device or on a fixed internet. Um, over time, we will start looking at internet access to be very pervasive. Um, so with that, I think our focus really in the mobility area is how can we enable enterprise applications to, deliver, to be delivered on multiple um, device platforms or smartphone platforms. So we're working with uh, large uh, players like Apple with, uh, with the iPhone, uh, with RIM and uh, Nokia and others you know, who are partners with us to enable using our strength in the network to enable enterprise applications to move with security to their device platforms.